Now that the line drawings for the daisy flowers are complete, it's time to move on to the stem and leaves. Note that the flowers have been removed from these stems to more clearly see the structure. Look carefully at the stem and leaves from different directions. Turn the stem and look at how the peduncles attach to the stem. Do they look crowded? Remember, flowers have to be added back onto these stems. Look at the negative space that is created. Is it comfortable looking, or is it crowded, or is it too open? These are all things to be considered. Once a viewpoint has been decided upon, it is time to draw. It will not be necessary to use the real estate technique we use for drawing the flowers, since only the stem proportions and the position of the leaves and peduncles are important to measure and place correctly. The length of the peduncles themselves can vary slightly in length to accommodate the placement of the flowers. We will discuss that later. Working on tracing paper, sketch a gesture for these parts. Note that the stem changes direction wherever a peduncle appears. Measure for these directional changes on the sketch. At this point, take your flower sketches and place them on the stem where you think they will work. Now, as we know, the buds have to be at the lower end of the stem. So since this is one of my longer, lower stems, that's going to be one of my buds. Now look at the total arrangement for clarity and design. It might be necessary to slightly lengthen or shorten a peduncle for the sake of the drawing. Or the peduncle might have to be moved in or away from the stem as well. And we'll move this stem so that it curves more like so and still comes out of the base where it should. And then I can put this baby a little lower because it has a very long peduncle. It doesn't need it. And this should give me a pretty nice composition. 
So the way to figure this out now, to be sure, is place this under another piece of tracing paper and have another look at it. So here is um, the basic arrangement for the flowers in relation to the stem. As I say, I did move this stem. I'm not sure I like this curve, so I may make it a little straighter. If need be, adjust the assembled parts again and create another quick composite drawing for review. So I now have leaves that I've placed in strategic places because they have to be at the base of each one of these peduncles. But as I look at this now, I am very concerned about this particular flower because I think that this particular peduncle is too short. So I'm going back to my flower again and I think I'm going to raise it up a little higher here and draw this peduncle a little bit longer and I think that it will make more sense in which case I may have to also move this flower up a little in order for it to to work better in relation to these other pieces. I've moved this flower up, I've moved this flower up and now it feels a little bit more natural to me than it did before when that peduncle was too short. So now I'm ready to do my finished drawing and I can use this as a guide. So I will put this underneath my tracing paper. And I will start with the flowers first. Here, just tape it in here. And then add this flower. So now that I have these, at least a couple of these flowers in position, I can start to trace off and start to put them on that tracing paper that is going to be my transfer sheet. So everything has to be drawn very carefully so that when you transfer, you're going to get an accurate drawing. By placing your good flower drawings in position on the composite, you will be able to accurately have all the parts of this plant in the correct position. This composite can then be used as a basis for creating the high quality line drawing needed for transfer onto good paper. I've carefully drawn all my flowers and all my leaves and now I am ready to transfer.